okay the new video today we are going to discuss about the factor of safety so maybe hopefully you search here for the definition of factor of safety and there is no need of defining this thing again and again and again because basic definitions are there in the textbooks so today we will discuss a uh, little bit more deeply with more understandings so what is factor of safety you maybe come across this term when you design some machine element that may be the design of some civil construction a building a concrete block a bridge or whatever the case so everywhere you could find this term factor of safety before discussing in detail about the technical things maybe you can consider a real life example and uh, this is the task that i am going to give you that uh, you are standing right here so you are standing right here I'm a little bad in drawing so consider you're standing right here and uh, there is a barrier in front of you maybe a 10 meter away there is a barrier so you are standing 10 meter away from this barrier and the task is as simple as on your hand you're holding a ball and I'm asking you to throw this ball and you have to put or you have to reach on the right hand side so this is what the field one this is what the field two you have to reach field two by simply throwing that ball so it's a simple task and by to complete this task i will be giving you a gold coin so it's a gold coin deal that you have to throw a ball from field one to field two so definitely you're going to get that uh, gold coin it's a uh, simply 10 meter okay there is a uh, two scenario that you have to consider on this uh, little game that uh, maybe you can throw that ball uh, right here right here means uh, simply in the vicinity of that barrier you could reach here or otherwise maybe you can put that ball right a uh, little bit ahead maybe here maybe here or over here whenever you put uh, your ball on field 2 you will be getting that gold coin so suppose you are going to put that ball right here simply very near to this barrier so for that purpose you may be a good thrower you had to calculate that how much force that you have to apply on this ball to simply put that very near to that barrier so suppose you put your ball very near to that barrier you are getting your god coin so you are successful but there is a certain scenario that uh, could not control suppose there is a wind blow even though you calculated everything perfectly even though you, you have a good practice in throwing balls but uh, if wind blows you could have failed and your ball will be back in the field when you lose the gold coin or otherwise even though you calculate everything if you make some mistake definitely you're going to lose your gold coin so what basically what we are practicing in normal life suppose imagine when i put you in this condition there is no question you will never try to put that ball very near to this barrier instead of that you will apply some extra force you will apply some extra force and you will reach that ball maybe a uh, five meter ahead of from what is actually required so, so you are putting an extra force means you are wasting force basically okay it's a big deal that you're putting some extra force uh, most of the time so you're putting extra force and you reach the five meter extra so why that is simply because you don't want to lose your gold coin you don't want to take uh, chances you don't want to take the probability of failure so definitely you're going to get that gold coin even though there is a certain mistake in your calculation even though certain mistake in your position or posture or the way that you are going to throw that ball even though there is uh, some unpredictable situation happens like wind blow it never going to fail anyway somehow it will reach the field too and you will get that gold coin so this is what the basic idea of factor of safety that means this extra five meter length this extra consideration that you are putting in this problem is simply for the sake of safety so this is what basically the factor of safety here the factor is simply an extra five meter you have to remember 
this story whenever we are further discussing factor of safety in more technical. Now you can consider something more technical to understand the factor of safety deeply. Suppose uh, I want to design a cantilever beam which can uh, support uh, some amount of load. So for example, I need to support uh, some 200 kilo newton load by this particular cantilever beam and uh, I require a certain amount of uh, safety. Suppose I design this cantilever beam for exactly 200 kilo newton. What happens if I add some 10 kilo newton more over this cantilever beam under certain condition, it will fail. And we are not expecting that kind of failure due to sudden change in the load or maybe some unpredictable situation. So for this purpose, I need certain amount of factor safety for that, I need to actually support 200 kilo newton, but I am going to design this cantilever beam for 400 kilo newton. So that means the factor of safety is equal to 2. So from this example, we could write a factor of safety in most of the cases is a ratio of the strength of that element divided by the actual load on that element. This can be also defined as the capacity of that element divided by the designed load. The designed load. So here the designed load is simply the actual load. So we are designing this cantilever beam for 200 kilo newton that is what the design load so design load is in other wise the working load or sometimes we will express it as the service load and all are the same so basically factor of safety is the capacity divided by what you required in some problems we are not going to use factor of safety in terms of load in those problem we will use factor of safety in terms of the stress that we are going to induce on that element in both the cases you will get the same factor of safety that means suppose you are expressing load in terms of stress value this is like when you apply the same load, you are experiencing some 300 megapascal for an example. So I have to support 300 megapascal and for a factor of safety good enough, we are going to design this cantilever beam which can actually support 600 megapascal. So 600 megapascal by 300 megapascal again you will get two so by means of load or by means of stress value you can find factor of safety right here then uh, the factor of safety can be also expressed in terms of power sometimes suppose i want to design a drive which can actually transfer uh, three hp so so i need a drive to transfer three hp power towards uh, another end and uh, I need a belt drive to transfer this 3 HP power. Suppose the power output from the motor is slightly increasing. What happens when suppose you are getting 3.1 HP if you design this belt drive according to 3 HP it may fail and we don't want that happened. So for the sake of safety, maybe you can design your drive for 6 HP. So I'm expecting a high safety and you're actually transferring 3 HP. Again, you will get a factor of safety of 2. So the selection of factor of safety depends upon your requirement. Suppose you are not expecting that much of factor of safety. You can constrain factor of safety into 1.5, maybe. 1.4 or 1.2 whatever 
you required mainly the components or the structure which is actually under human life in risk you have to consider a more or higher value of factor of safety to calculate factor of safety you supposed to identify one more thing this factor of safety will depends upon the behavior of that material so basically we have two kind of material ductile and brittle material the ductile materials are the material which offers yielding it will give you certain amount of yielding before it fail so from this graph you could see yield point this material will give you a plastic deformation that means that material changes its original shape suppose you design a bolt up with a ductile steel material it yield on that point means it change its original shape you design that bolt for 10 mm on yield it reduced to 9 mm that means that design failed for every ductile material the strength of that material is up to its yielding so that means according to our basic definition that we discussed factor of safety for ductile material is equal to strength of that material in this case it is the yield stress of that material divided by the design stress or the working stress that means in the case of ductile material you have to consider yield point as the strength and upon dividing that with design stress you will get factor of safety but in the case of brittle material it will not give you an amount of yielding so brittle materials are suddenly failed without enough yielding so that means the capacity of a brittle materials is what the maximum stress value or otherwise the ultimate stress value is the strength of brittle material if you consider ultimate stress in the case of ductile materials it will not works because ductile material will fail upon yield itself and if you consider the ultimate means it may change its shape on yield and there is no use of considering its ultimate stress but in the case of a brittle material it's so there is no yielding and it will suddenly fail upon ultimate stress so the factor of safety here will be equal to the strength of this material so for brittle the strength is what simply the ultimate stress so ultimate stress divided by the design stress will give you the factor of safety for brittle material so remember this changes for ductile materials it is yield by design stress for brittle materials it is ultimate stress by design stress you can also note one more thing in the case of uh, fatigue loading so these two conditions are under static situation in the case of a uh, fatigue loading or in the case of dynamic stress conditions the factor of safety is equal to the strength or capacity of the material the fatigue capacity of material is simply the endurance limit stress the endurance limit divided by the design stress this stress so in case of fatigue load you have to consider endurance limit as the strength or the capacity so this is the total way that we calculating factor of safety in different situation here you have some examples of factor of safeties you look at uh, here we have steel in case of steel if there is steady load we will consider factor of safety of 4 if there is a live load we consider it as 8 in the case of shock load a material under shock load if you use steel you have to consider factor of safety in between 12 and 16 that means depends upon the condition whether it is steady live or shock load you have to choose uh, that particular safety maybe you remember our story and i am back to the story that i said you at the beginning so let me calculate the factor of safety for this problem so in this case 
you have a capacity of throwing this ball from this point to this extreme end that means you're actually throwing that 15 meter but your requirement is simply 10 meter so 15 by 10 you will get 1.5 so you choose a factor of safety of 1.5 to get a gold coin as always thank you